Hey everyone, I'm back with Jumpstart 3rd Grade. And yeah, it's been a while since the last one. A bunch of things have been happening, like, first and foremost, I've almost, I mean almost, hit 2 million views on YouTube. That's really cool. Um, I also had to do a audition of some sort for my college. Like, music really thing, oh my god. I'm like so overwhelmed. And then my recent cover of Dino Truck, the Dino Truck theme, uh, got some praise from, oh, what's his name? David Kidd, the executive producer of the show. So I was like, oh my god. And I shared it everywhere. And I think I went a little overboard. <laughs> but what the heck? Oh my god. That's like, wow. And he said that I was the first guy to cover that song so wow that's really cool so so david kid if you're watching this thank you for that because uh, i really love your show i do <clears throat> excuse me let's trucks it up yep i love it all right now let's get back to this game and do another mission shall we Oh, I'm on the fourth one now. Okay. All right. We still got places to go and robots to rescue. Click on any of the buttons near the bottom of the transquisitor. I guess I have ten missions left. Cool. More videos. Oh, okay. The yellow start button will play this question. The invention of writing was the stuff of legend for ancient people. The Chinese, for example, believed it was a gift to Emperor Yu from the magic tortoise he saved from drowning. Today's archaeologists tell a different story about the invention of writing. What did people first write on? They wrote on what everybody writes on, Miss Winkle. Word processors, of course. What? No. Why, you're right again, Polly. Archaeologists have dug up many ancient examples of the first word processors, some still attached to early dot matrix printers. Huh? Holy handwriting. The history of writing will be turned upside down and backwards if Polly gets her way. We better write that wrong, uh, so to speak. Click on the inventory button to put away the transquisitor. That Polly will do anything to have her way, won't she? <laughs> turn the invention of writing into the invention of wronging. I sent a racer bot to rub history the wrong way. Find these four clues if you want to try to stop him. A book, a brick, a glass of water, and a rubber tire. Poor eraser bot. The automatic robotic pencil eraser. What if he gets rubbed out during Polly's quest to erase history? Who'll be there to correct the professor's mistakes? The writing's on the wall, and it's clear that we need to find those clues. Keep still while I sense around for clues. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hit a mission clue in the music hall. Oh, cool. <laughs> what rot, what rot, <clears throat> what luck. <laughs> music. Ooh. Door's locked again, and there's a new password. I hate to bother him, but mm. hey, Beethoven! I'm not totally deaf, you know. Just let me know if you need a few pointers. People play and picnic and walk their dogs here. We nice to go for a picnic for once, but I guess not. <laughs> Park. Terrific! We're almost in. It's like a pond, only bigger. Lake. Terrific! We're almost in. A really big town. City. You've got a real talent for this. The 
governor is in charge of this area. Governor. State. That's what it is. I never had this one before, I don't think. Places. Is that what it is? Places? Correct. Yeah. Your password is places. Cool. <laughs> All right. I wonder what this is supposed to be. Let's try flute. And then... Oh, I know what this song is. I know what this song is. It's a song Foghorn Langhorn always hummed to himself every episode of those Warner Brother cartoons. <laughs> uh, those were the days. <laughs> it wasn't MGM. Oh, I can't remember. You did it. Cool. This song is called the Cap Town Races, and one hundred fifty years ago. It was the numero uno song in America. Mrs. Beasley in the art gallery tells me that back then, everyone was whistling it. Biosphere. Oh, you're picking up a mission clue vibe from the biosphere. We've got to get in there and <coughs> seek it out. All in a truth time. Click on the launch button if you want to launch an explorer. Okay. Now we can navigate the explorer around the 
biosphere by watching it on this monitor. Ooh, we're back under the biosphere. It's creepy down here. Let's get up to the surface. Oh, you stumped me with that one, Polly. Ugh. You don't have to be Humpty Dumpty to figure this one out. Which animal has an egg tooth for chipping its way out of its shell when it's ready to hatch? A snake, a tadpole, or a bird? Sorry. Oh, it was a bird. It's a bird. I'm very sure it's a bird. Shoot. Oh my god, um... Just a lucky guess. Yeah. Binge watching uh, the Magic School Bus yesterday on Netflix. It was Don't fun. Leap to conclusions on this question: Which animal starts off life as a tadpole, a caterpillar, a frog, or a turtle? Wasn't there a Magic School Bus episode on that? I don't remember. Or am I thinking of the one where the time Wanda lost her bullfrog? I don't know. <laughs> that was way too easy. Because I could have sworn they had one. No, it could be something else. I don't know. <laughs> this is an animal that reminds me of you, Butley. What animal is known for its warts? A tadpole, a turtle, or a toad? Everyone knows that. Does that make them any more gross? I don't know. Uh, um, it can't be a rainforest, can it? Of 
hound, an animal known for its dry skin and warts. This is a toad. That was some smooth landing. Now we can open that box by clicking on the key on the console. Yeah. Nice work. Store the clip. Let's move on. There's no mission clue here. Stand back now while I sense the place out. Right. Ugh. No doubt about it. There's a clue <sighs> in the observatory. We're on Easy Street. There's another clue in the robot maze. Here we go again. Polly's launched another one of the mission clues into space. Man your battle stations. Uh. Get ready for a fun-packed thrill ride to the bottomless pit. When will she stop? Why, if I was her father... Just click on the telescope and I'll help you save the world. Uh. Transmission and our hint. You better act fast before it's sucked into the black hole. Polly's transmission is four radio packets good. Make sure you collect them all, or we won't be able to decode her hint. Wait a minute. You got another radio wave packet. Great. You got another radio wave packet. Wait a minute. Another asteroid breaks the dust. Great. We have all the packets. Now we have to decode Polly's message. Here comes Polly's message, fresh from the brink of the black hole. Get ready to use the decoder. Once again, it's all scrambled. Obviously, she's doing that on purpose. Click and drag the blocks of words to create a complete sentence. Huh. Okay, now here's the next piece of Polly's clue. Great, you decoded one of the sentences. Almost there, but it seems Polly left a grammatical booby trap. I can't make any sense out of that, but you managed to find a real sentence. Great. I think I know which constellation is talking about. Is it uh, Virgo? Way to go! You nailed the code! I bring rain to the dry desert. Sometimes I bring deadly floods. I am the water bearer of the gods. I pour water from my large jar. Okay, you unscrambled the hint. Quick, to the star chart. Okay, now it's time to find that spaceship. Click on the machine so we can start our search. Click on any of the constellations and this machine will tell you a little bit about them. Mm. Polly's clue should help you figure out the right constellation. If you think you know it, then click on the constellation again. Virgo was a beautiful young woman who in Greek mythology left the earth because humans acted so badly. No, Virgo's it's not her. Spica is one of the brightest stars in the sky. It shines 1400 times brighter than the sun, but its light travels over 200 years to reach Earth. Ures is one of the oldest constellations, sometimes called the Hunter or the Herdsman. He follows the Great Bear and keeps all the other heavenly animals together in the sky. Auriga couldn't walk. So he invented a chariot to carry him around. Four horses pulled the beautiful chariot. It worked so well that the gods honored Auriga by placing his image in the night sky. Cancer is the Latin name for crab. Can you see the crab's claws? Cancer is also... 
Hmm. That definitely wasn't it. Pixis is a ship's compass. It guides Jason and the Argonauts on their perpetual journey through the heavens. Orion the Hunter is the brightest constellation in the winter sky, and in Greek mythology, the most handsome man in the world. He is the easiest to pick out. Look for his uplifted club in one hand, his feet widespread, and his belt around his waist. Stars that are three Capricorn is a goat with the no, tail No, it's of not a fish. that one. In the ancient Middle East, Capricorn appeared in the winter sky. The fish tail represented the Aquarius means water bearer in life. Oh! Because people believed he carried water to the gods. But Aquarius was a constellation that ancient people feared. It appeared in the winter, and winter brought rain and sometimes deadly floods. Way to go! You picked the right constellation, and now the ship is heading back here. We made it! Wow, that was wicked. Just put a clue into the inventory and let's... Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the robot maze. We'll go uh, there after this.